Hi, and welcome to question four of the 2022 paper one of the Liebenstart Ordinary Level Maths. So as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And if you like and subscribe, you'll get access to more playlists. So let's get stuck in. So question four here looks like functions, okay? So we're given a function here. Now it's got a highest power of three. So we call that a third order polynomial or cubic equation. So I'm gonna write it out. Okay, just good to get myself started. I realize I'm using red pen, which is all too teachery. And let's make sure I rewrite it correctly. Even by writing it out, I go, this is like a fairly complicated equation and would have a fairly convoluted shape. And usually cubics, something along the lines of that. Okay, it's going up, but there's a lot of change. Now they asked me for work out the value of g of five. Now if I write the g of five below here, hopefully it makes the connection that x is five. And if you make that realization, all I have to do the whole way across is everywhere I see x, swap it with three in brackets, five rather, five in brackets. Now you don't really need the brackets here, but well, if you don't put the brackets around the powers here, it might not be recognized in the calculator because that's the last thing I can do here is just bring up my calculator, okay, and try to type that in. So it was, I have to flick back and forth, the memory of a, a goldfish, and that's the power of three, and that then is minus seven times five to the power of two, plus, no, I don't actually need the five in brackets because the calculator will understand that that's plus five and then take away 12. So hopefully I programmed that right. Press equal and I got negative 57. Okay. It feels kind of weird, but like you know, it, doesn't, it isn't actually all that weird. Let's double check the answer on the next page. Yeah, it's right. Now the part two then, now in just a point out here, that's a fairly handy 10 marks to be honest. Like this should be the bread and butter of what we do in the maths exam. Like even if you don't know what you're doing necessarily, if you write out the function and then write out the g of five, it's not a massive leap to go, you know what, even if I don't know what I'm doing, sure, why not just everywhere I see x put five in and then throw it through the calculator and see what happens. And then you got a good 10 marks, okay. Now part two, it will get into this, um, this is g prime x and this is the derivative which is differentiation, okay or sometimes you might call that calculus. So it's a really, really important technique in science and engineering. It can't be expressed how important that is for humanity um, and got us to where we are in terms of technology. But there's a specific way to differentiate, okay? So I'm gonna write out again, I'm gonna write out the g of x, which is the original equation. And differentiation is a process where I can change this equation and it'll show me everywhere the, um, the, the, the slope of this curve at every point. I'm just going to show this graph here, um, done out notes, actually needs to be zoomed out. And if you see there, this is my lowest point here. That's what I just found when g of x is equal to five. Okay, if you can see that line up, that says where x is equal to five. What's my coordinate? It's somewhere on this, which is somewhere around minus 57, okay. So that just proves that we were right in our first part, okay? Now, if you notice this graph, okay, um, it's going up, down, and going back up again. So the slope of this line is, incre is, is positive here. Then at this point here, at the, the maximum point, it has a slope of zero, okay? It's hard to see on that zoomed out thing. But when the slope is, is, is not going up, before it starts going down, it has to be by, by definition zero. Then it goes negative, Okay, and it comes all the way down to the bottom and it becomes zero again and then becomes positive. So differentiation gives us an equation to describe the slope of this at every single point. Okay, and that's super, super powerful. So let's do it. The notation here, um, we're using this dash to indicate that what follows has been differentiated. And the rules of differentiation are fairly simple uh, at the basic level. And it says that you should multiply the power by the number in front. 
Okay, that's, that's, that's the first step. Now there's a number one there, so three times one is three. And step two of differentiation says you should take away one from the power. So three take away one is two. Now that's called the power rule of differentiation. We can do the same thing here in the second term. So power by number in front, two times negative seven is negative 14. And then we take one away from the power, two take away one is one. We don't actually need to write that one because by definition, if there's no power there, it is one. Now, the weird thing here is, let's do it up here. If you're differentiating x to the power of one, okay, this term here, the, we follow the same rule, okay? Power by number in front, so one by one is one. And then step two says, take one away from the power, one take away one is zero. Now, one times x to the power of zero, x to the power of zero is one, so that's one times one. One times one is one. Now we often learn off when we're doing differentiation is that whenever you're differentiating a variable on its own, the variable just drops away and you're left with one. So if I took a different example here and said, just differentiate four X, it's going to end up being four. So you just learn to drop away the X and go straight to the answer instead of having to do this rigmarole here. Now, any number, I'm just gonna use the graph we were just using if I graph y is equal to 12, okay, now I'm going to clear that off. I have to just zoom out because it's off up here. That's the line y is equal to 12. Now, what would the slope of that line be? Well, there is no slope, okay? It's, it's horizontal. So there's no slope, no variation from the x-axis, okay? So that's it. Any number when differentiated always turns to zero. We don't write down zero, so we're finished, okay? And this is our answer. This new equation gives us the slope at any point on that graph. So if I tested here with something simple, okay? If I took this away and went back, and if I said, what's the value of the slope, okay? Let's take, let's take an easy point. The value of the slope when y is, when x is zero, so on the y-axis, okay? Now, I, I'm going to predict that that's going to be a positive number because the slope is going up, okay? If I said, what's the slope there? Now, if I put in 0 0.073 into the new equation we found, I should get an answer of zero, but I'm going to take this one here just for simplicity. So if I said, let's put zero in here. Again, this is not part of the question, okay? And then I might feature later on. And if I put zero in instead of X all the way across, that first term is going to go away. The second term is going to go away because anything by zero is zero. I'm going to get an answer of plus one. So the slope when x is zero is equal to one, which is a positive number, which is basically what I predicted. Okay. And that's the power of differentiation. If you think of the world we live in, it's constantly changing. The, the temperature of the room you're in, your heart rate, your pulse, your any, anything is changing. In science and engineering, we want to understand what is changing, why, what's causing the change. If we can make models to describe that change, well, then we can react to it. We can do things that are positive, okay, and understand our world better. And that's the reason we as a species have been able to develop to the technological situation we're in now. So again, it can't be underestimated how important calculus is. You know, if, if, if that's not the field of study that you want to do as a career, fair enough, you may never use calculus again, okay? But if you want the world to be increasing in technology, then calculus is how it's done, okay, at the, at the core of it. Now, in the notes, I've just, um, I've done that. It, it's worth taking time to focus in on differentiation and there's any number of great videos online that would be helpful for that. Um, and again, in other videos I make where we're covering differentiation, I'll be covering it as well. Now that's part um, two. So a handy five marks if you know how to differentiate. If you don't, it's hard to BS this one, to be honest. Now the next one says, when X is five, what's the value of the slope? They're telling us that's six. So, so let's write out the information we have, okay? We have from the previous question, and writing this down may get you marks. It just depends on the marking scheme. Let's make sure I write it down properly. Okay, let's go backwards, not forwards. 
So 3x squared minus 14x plus 1. So it's 3x squared minus 14x plus 1. Now something's making me check the answer I wrote down. No, that's right. Okay. So they also tell us that um, when x is 5, this is 6. Now, if you see it, this is kind of tricky here. This and this are equal. Okay. So you can make the statement, 6 is equal to 3, and I'm going to leave this blank for a second, minus 14x plus 1. Now, I could put x there, but I, 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 if I read the question carefully, I go, well, should I know x is 5? It's only equal to 6 when x is 5. So I can replace these with each other. Okay, And they should be equal to 6. Now, if you put that to the calculator, you will find that 6 is equal to 6, which might not be the core of this question. So I actually didn't read the question yet. So it says, use this to find, so use this to find the equation of the tangent. Now, a tangent is a line. Okay. So you're trying to find the equation of a line, which usually involves this formula here. Now, you won't get marks right now the formula, but if we can put anything in there correctly, we're going to probably move up to at least the low partial. Now, I've been told should the slope is 6. Okay, so that m is probably going to be 6. Now, it says use this to find the equation of the tangent to the curve y is equal to g of x. Okay, so that's the function we had a while ago, the third order polynomial or the cubic equation, when x is 5. Okay, and then leave your answer in the form of ax plus by plus c equals 0. Now, that's just a, a format of a linear equation. This fluff here doesn't matter, it just says A, B, or C can be any number. Okay. So I suppose we probably should find out what G of X is. Okay, now we were given that. Okay. Let me just flick back um, backwards. So X to the power of three minus seven X squared and plus X minus 12. So then say, use this to find the equation of the line, um, whatever, when x is equal to 5. Now, I don't know how to use the 5 again, but we should put 5 in here. g of 5 is the y value when x is 5. So if we put it true, and it's all positive, so I don't necessarily need to have the brackets, um, although I probably should have here. In a sense, I should put brackets the whole way along. Okay, I shouldn't be inconsistent in what I'm saying. Now, if we put that to the calculator, um, I have it done already, okay, and we got 57. Let me just double check that. Um, negative 57. So they're saying to us that the slope at x is equal to 5 is 6. And they're saying that, or we found here is that where the slope is 6, the coordinates are 5 on the x, negative 57 on the y. So we have a point. We have a slope. This equation of the line makes more sense to use. Now, it's going to go to the answer on the next page because I've kind of run out of space. But that's what we did first. Okay, we said when x was 5, the slope, and g prime x is the slope, is equal to 6. Okay, so if I go back to my thing here, when x is 5, okay, let me try to bring it down. This is a weird graph. You see the 5 on the x axis is on top there. Okay, so if it's going up, it's a positive number. Okay, so when x is 5, we're looking for this point here. Okay, roughly, if it touches 5, is minus 57-ish. Now, it's not 5.012 there, but I just can't get it at the 5. It's just awkward. So that's a point, 5 on the x. Okay, the slope there is 6, and it's positive, so it's going up, so that, that makes sense. And it's negative 57 on the y. So again, we have our slope, okay, six. We have our point. If we use this equation here, we need to know what m is and x is and y is in order to be able to solve it out. You don't substitute for this y and this x. They stay as the, in the answer. So I've done it there. Let me just clear this off. And instead of y, I put the negative 57. Instead of slope, I put six. Instead of x, I put the five. Okay, so I'm just substituting in the values I have. Then I can go left to right. OK, 
okay, the minus by minus changes that to a plus. And then this six multiplies by both terms of the bracket. So six into x goes, six times x is six x, six times negative five is negative 30. Now we're basically there, okay, the rest is just solving it out. They want it in a certain format. They want everything on one side, x being positive. That's the classic way the Levis are wanted. And if I do that, then I need to have, um, well, the six stays where it is. So I need to move the y and move the 57. I'm doing two things at once here. To get rid of the y, I'm going to take y from it. If I do it one side, I have to do it both. I'm also going to take 57 away in order to get rid of that. If I do it to one side, I have to do it both. We go left, right, then y minus y is zero. That's gone. 57 minus 57 is zero. That's gone. On the far side here, the 6x six, six never got changed. Now the minus 30 can combine with the negative 57. And I got negative 87. And you just order it x first, then y, then number. And I've done that here, 6x minus y minus 7, or minus 87, and that's my answer. So fairly tricky question, okay? Um, this is one of those questions where it's worth reading many, many times. Now we had the value of having the, um, the graphing package to look at the graph, to try to illustrate it. And again, it's got that classic cubic equation um, situation going on. But it's worth remembering with um, any model, okay, that as X changes, Y is changing. And in this particular situation, um, Y is, as, as X changes, Y is going up dramatically, then as X changes suddenly becomes the Y isn't changing at all and then starts decreasing. And then eventually, okay, it comes up positive again. Now the question is like, how is this useful? Well, in trying to describe a situation in the world, you might want to be using a segment of a model and that perfectly describes the change in that system. We can, I suppose, combine the change in different systems to understand how the bigger system is changing. And if, if we could ever hack the body and be able to work out how, how, how all the different processes in the body change depending on external uh, forces. Well, we'd understand our body's perfect. Now, I think that's impossible, but um, the, with the complexity of the human body. But that's what we aim for, is to try to understand systems to the deepest level. And that's where calculus comes in. All they're trying to ask you to do in the Leibniz is prove that you can perform certain skills that you could develop if you chose to go down the route of science or engineering. Okay, and again, not every scientist is going to be using calculus to deep levels, um, but people who are designing or researching would often have to have um, skill in calculus to be able to perform their jobs like properly. Okay, so I think that's the end of question four. Um, it's not actually, bloody hell. So this next part here is saying the graph of the function y is equal to ux, okay, is shown below. And they say for a domain, so the different x values from zero as far as 10. So there is zero on the x. So it starts off roughly negative two and a half. The slope is going up, then it goes up faster and slows down and then kind of evens out, but it's, it's probably still increasing here. At some point here, it starts to decrease and the slope goes negative, okay? So it says u prime x is the derivative of ux. And then it's actually asking us to use the graph, write down a value for x for which u of x is negative. So when the slope is negative, and that's the big thing to take away again. When you differentiate something, okay, and this is what this means. Okay, whatever you, we don't even know what u of x is, okay. But we know that when it's differentiated, it'll be, it'll have a slope. Okay, that, again, that's what slope is. That's what differentiation is. So slope is positive all the way here. Hard to tell here. And then from here on, it's fairly obviously negative. So really just any value, I'm just gonna pick there, okay? Where X is equal to eight, that's negative. That's fairly handy marks. As long as you have a fair idea of what slope is, and I often refer to slope as rate of change. The rate of change as X increases, Y is increasing, okay? Y increases rapidly, slows down and starts decreasing. But X is constantly changing. It then says part two on the diagram above, draw the tangent to u of x at the point four two. So you actually have to draw this. So four in the x, two in the y is here. Okay. Uh, it says use the tangent to work out an estimate for the value of u prime four. So 
what's the slope when x is four? So if I can kind of draw a tangent there, and I'm terrible at this, so I apologize. Okay, that's not too bad. It's basically saying, what's the slope, okay, at that point? So we need to figure that out. Now, if I had what u of x was, this would be fairly handy. I could just substitute four in to the, the differentiated equation. Well, I think what they want here is I should have extended this further. Okay, then let's pretend that's a line. So if you see, this kind of creates a triangle. It just doesn't, doesn't look like that because it's my bad drawn. So I should go on to the answer. That's the perfect line there, okay? Now, that triangle, when we use slope, we often use the concept of rise over run. So this is, this is a tangent. A rise over run works with linear models. A tangent is a line. So it's going up two k units and going across four. So what's the rise over run? When you see here, it's two up on the y-axis, four across on the x-axis. Now, two over four is the same thing as a half. So what's the slope here? Okay, well, it's the same as the slope here, same as the slope here, same as the slope here. We need to find out what's the slope of that line. And rise over run is how you do it. And that's that goes up by two, goes across by four. And if you pick anywhere, if you even pick this triangle here, okay, goes up by one, goes across by two. It doesn't matter what you pick, okay, it'll always give the same slope. A linear model has constant slope. A nonlinear model doesn't. And until differentiation, we had no way of working out the rate of change of a non-linear model. And differentiation allows us to do that. And a lot of systems are linear, but a lot of systems are not linear. And that's why we need to have this methodology. So I think that should be the end. I've said that before though. Oh, it is, okay. So that's the end of question four. Uh, as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. See you in question five.